You are listening to the ABC Business Show, and here are your hosts, Kerry, Elise, and MJ. Hello, and welcome to the ABC Business Show, where we help entrepreneurs make their dream a reality. Well, welcome. We are excited for you to be here. As always, I am joined by my co-hosts, MJ and Elise. Hi, ladies. How was the weekend? Working, working, working. <laughs> or at least it's tax season. Oh, I was busy too, but I did take a little time out. I'm in Vero Beach, Florida, and I took two hours to lay on the beach and it was wonderful. So sorry, Elise. Awesome. Good for you. We need to do a beach day someday. Okay, so today we are hearing from Elise. So I hope you know the drill by now. Get your pen and paper ready as she is going to have lots of information. So we're going to talk about taxes, 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 and your entity. So people do not realize how the taxes change depending on the kind of entity that you have and just think that they can talk to their friend that has a business and that it's all going to be the same because they have this and this and this, this is the same. But the one thing is different that they don't talk about. So uh, it's important that you don't compare yourself to everybody else and know exactly what you should be doing. So Elise, what is our quote for the day? Our quote for the day comes from my good, it's not my good friend, but I think I need to reach out to him, but it's Keith Cunningham, oh, great financial him. mind. And one of the things I got from his book was the government does not care when we earn, owed, or used our cash, just when we received it and spent it. I like that. That's something I need to quote to my clients. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it is actually the reason I picked it because in a nutshell, that is accounting and taxes. All right. I thought they only cared that we paid them. <laughs> well, here we go. Well, it's tax time, right? <laughs> for Elise. And how should our listeners look at their taxes? Well, let's start by looking at taxes from a business point of view with a few questions to ponder. Okay. Because from a business point of view, it's just another bill, right? So would you say taxes are just another expense? Maybe. Are taxes on your budget? Most unlikely not for most people. <laughs> and do you plan to let taxes control your business decisions? Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Those mm. are things that, you know, as business coaches, profit first coaches and stuff like that, these are the kind of things that we address and, you know, and help people put order in to their businesses so that the last question, the answer to that is absolutely not. That's right. So in Profit First, we always tell our clients to set up a bank account for taxes specifically. And, you know, sometimes people just, they don't want to put money aside for taxes because it's a case of like, hey, well, we'll, we'll figure it out when it happens. And, you know, for me, you know, I know that, you know, when my CPA calls me in December and tells me like, hey, I need you to make a tax payment. I'm like, okay, I got it because I have my tax account. So when you come across clients that, you know, struggle with this, how do you help them to understand that it's a good thing to save for taxes? Well, let me say I start off by getting the business owner to look at their cash position on a monthly basis and compare it to the cash needs monthly. And we had talked about that back in budgeting a little bit and to get it on the budget. Once they get a good feel for the changes that occur or do occur, can occur, and really taking into full scope of what's going on with their cash which Profit First helps a lot to examine those and set aside for them. That is what large corporations do. Once they start moving money into those specific accounts, it takes a bit, but eventually you start getting comfortable with it and it gets to be a lot more fun. Nothing makes me more happy than when a client, when I have to tell a client, you know, need you to pay 250,000, 500,000, 20,000. And they go, no problem. It's huge. We've got that under control. It is huge. You talked about it feeling a little bit uncomfortable moving that money into an account. There's nothing more uncomfortable than having your CPA say, it's time to put 50 or $200,000 into your taxes when you don't even have that money. So being ahead of that, getting ahead of all of that by 
putting that money aside is so important to everything, stress, mental health, business health, all of it. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's one thing, you know, with our profit first clients, when we're saving, they're kind of like, well, I'm not going to owe that much in taxes. And I'm like, well, let's have enough there to make sure we are covered. And then, hey, you know what? You've got a head start on saving for taxes next year. So, you know, for me, it's always like, you know, just get one step ahead of the game and you know, don't worry about saving too much unless, of course, it's in, you know, in a detriment to your business. But just just do it. It's uh, it, it's something you will not regret when you get that tax bill. Yeah. And if I can say when I was a realtor my first year, I had no idea, no idea about this. And then I spent my whole second year of real estate just trying to pay off my taxes from the first year. And it wasn't until I got into the fourth quarter of my second year in real estate that I was able to set aside money for my taxes for that year. So it, it was years of me playing catch up when I didn't have the knowledge that we're sharing today. So it's huge. You are spot on, MJ, about that. And that is one of the things when someone starts a new business, it is the hardest thing to get in place of those things. And we had, I think we're, we were talking something about that with Carrie and Profit First is get those good habits in first. So on, on my level for the financial side, we call control systems need to get in place. And those are systems and processes. And what we're trying to create is a business that is being controlled, not it controlling you. And that's exactly what your story is because you were in business <laughs> and you could have set aside, you know, a few pennies in your first year, had you known. Yeah, if I had done it like every check, you know, cause real estate's commission. So a lot of our listeners have a commission-based business. And so you don't know, it's not a consistent revenue stream. It's, you know, one month you might have a big commission, the next month you might have no commission when you're starting out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was really hard for me, but if I had, if I had stopped and each check, I had chopped that up and put into separate accounts and had one of those accounts be a tax account, I would never have had that problem. So that's huge. Yeah, it's a lot easier to save lots of smaller amounts than trying to find one large amount at the end of the year. Absolutely. And, and to do it right from the get-go, that revenue comes in and you chop it up. And then there's no question whether or not you have the money. So I have another question. Um, you know, a lot of times I work with businesses that have not incorporated which then they start asking me questions about the different types of entities that a business owner can use. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Elise? Well, let me start off with everybody kind of knows that the entity called an LLC is the most popular. And okay. it is. It is correct. And it can be utilized in many, many ways. But it also, you have to be very careful how you use it and how you set it up. There are also corporations, partnerships, and sole proprietorships. And the accounting or tax accounting that's done for the different type of entities is different. So Elise, can you explain to our listeners then a little bit about the taxation on those different entities? Sure. But before I get going there, I just want to kind of explain a little bit that a few of the accounting items that I'd like to remind our listeners of. And there are about 20 different types of accounting methods. And tax accounting has about half of those. Okay. There are accounting methods for different industries. There are tax methods for different industries. And it can get complicated. That is correct. But we get started off on the right foot and in the right type of entity, then things go a lot smoother. That makes total sense. Yeah. And, and that's why you so need a tax accountant to do your books and not just some online software to do all of that because you've got to make sure you're doing this the right way and you're in the right entity that suits your situation the best and not just, you know, I get people, oh, I, I made myself an escort. Great. Why did you do that? Oh, my dad told me to. <laughs> it's like, talk to a tax pro, find out why and if you know, that makes sense for you to do that. That is absolutely correct. 100% perfect, Carrie. You are right. And so what we do is we help our clients and things like that to see the differences in the accounting. What we do is we reconstruct the bookkeeping. First, on the accounting side, full accrual basis is there to analyze profits and cash flow. 
It is the best accounting method there is, but there are modifications depending on the industry. And for tax purposes, we reconstruct those books on a tax basis that is acceptable to the government based on the industry that you're in as well. So the main purpose, of course, is to maximize all the deductions that are, and watch this word, allowable. So now um, this is where you need your pens. I'm going to give you a simple example that for business owners, a lot of them that have been around the block for a while understand this, believe it or not, and they're not in our field. They do what they do. But um, I'm going to give you four they're going to call them A, B, C, and D. All right. And I got my pen. I'm ready. So on A, that's you. Just you. You equal a sole proprietor. And on the tax on that, you're going to get taxed on your income. And you're going to get what is called self-employment tax added on top of that. So you are covered just like if you were an S corporation and you had to be on payroll and all that kind of stuff. If it's just you, you do not have to be anything but a sole proprietorship and buy plenty of insurance. Okay, so that's A. Keep it simple. B, you plus one person equals a partnership. Okay, now how does a partnership get taxed? You get taxed on your net income, taxable income, plus self-employment tax. So are you on payroll in a partnership? No, you're not. So it's a very interesting way to do business. Partnerships used to be the main type of entity that professionals, attorneys, engineers, CPAs use in business. And a lot of companies still do operate as a partnership. But the difficulties on the accounting and taxation of partnerships is why a lot of people walk away because they're not willing to understand and learn how great an entity a partnership can be. Okay, that's B. Now we're going to go to C. C is stockholders. Stockholders equal a corporation. Now is stockholder the same as a shareholder? A stockholder holds a certificate that says they are a shareholder. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So Thank stock, you for clarifying that for our listeners. <laughs> so stock is what you issue in a corporation. You don't issue shareholders. You issue stock certificates. So you have stockholders little English definitions here. <laughs> awesome. Love that. Okay. So stockholders equal, equal a corporation. How do they pay taxes? They pay taxes on their income and then they pay taxes on any dividends that are distributed to the stockholders. Gotcha. And then we're going to move to D and D is a member. A member equals an LLC. Now, an LLC mimics A, B, and C by election. It means you have to notify the IRS what, how you're going to be utilizing your LLC. Give us an example of that. Um, so, let's say that as an LLC, it is just you. Okay. And that is determined to be what is called a single member LLC. It's a great type of entity to own real estate. You have all the flexibility of just being taxed on your income. And if you're actually in the real estate business where you have homes, you work on them, you do all the work yourself, and you know, maybe you're a flipper or something like that, you're going to keep it simple. And then um, on also the membership, if they decide to add a person, so there's more than one person, you have the choice when you become, you would become a partnership by default. Okay. You're going to be subject to the partnership rules. And then if you choose to elect from an LLC to go into a corporation, you need to do that pretty, pretty early on before you get into what we call carryover issues, which can cause additional taxation to occur when you make the election. 
Okay. So that's kind of how um, you move from one single to ownership. And then C is the final election. And you also have to be very careful when you make this, but is moving into the corporate arena. So an LLC can initially say, I would prefer to be taxed as a corporation. Before you do a whole lot of business, you can be in your startup phase or something like that. And then, um, then you say, okay, well, I'm not really crazy about corporations because if I'm a corporation, um, I can't take money out. And that's right. And then the next thing is, oh, I'll make an S election. We've got to be really, really careful about operating as a C corporation because when you start making these elections, just change the type of entity you want to be in. There are tax ramifications. Right. There are tax ramifications when we make elections to move from one tax accounting basis to another. And so that's where the complications of business come in. We were talking earlier about, you know, it's not doing what you do in a business is running your business. And alongside of that, the government's very interested in how you run your business, <laughs> just in case you might owe them some money. Yeah, it's, it's one of the things that I think, you know, you've just highlighted the importance of working with professionals, because this is the kind of thing you don't want to get wrong. You don't want to screw this up and then have huge tax implications that you just had no idea about. You, you need to talk to a tax professional that can ask you the right questions, guide you down the right avenue to go to make sure that, you know, you're paying the least amount of taxes legitimately and legally. So you're not you know, going to end up in jail, but, you know, do this the right way and ask someone who knows exactly what they're doing, who has experience and can guide you through that, because that is just so critical. Yes. I have a little tip for you, Carrie. Um, and this is because Carrie is actually raised in England. And when I, when I work with foreigners, I, it cracks me up. But in the United States, you will not go to jail for owing taxes. For that you tax will, evasion. <laughs> you will go to jail for tax fraud mm -hmm. or tax evasion. Call it what you want. Uh -huh. yeah. So people freak out. They think the IRS is going to knock on their door. And yes, we call, I call them, I, not all CPAs, but I call them, you know, they're almost borderline KGB because they will knock on your door. It depends on who our president is. <laughs> Goodness. So I have a question. Like if, if I'm going to a CPA, right, or I should say our listeners are going to go to a CPA for the first time to talk about incorporating, right? What kind of questions should they anticipate that CPA asking them? How, do, how can they prepare for that meeting? Um, well, initially, the CPA is going to want to get, it's going to get a feel for what their, I, what their business plan is. It's okay. like, do you have a business plan? What are your immediate goals? What are your long-term goals? Because what when you're selecting the entity, if they haven't already listened to, you know, their friend tell them what to do. When you're selecting the entity, we want to look at the long term. Where do you want to go with this? Number one, are you, you are you going to be selling soon? You know, are do you have intentions of going public? Do what is your goal? And then we back into what is the best type of entity to start with. That's going to make it easy for you to implement your systems, implement your processes, and do your set asides, your profit first, and things like that. Keep it simple, and then how we morph the business into the right entity for whatever your long term goal is. Okay, perfect. So you can change entities. So you 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 might start out with one, and then you might bring your business to a level where it makes much more sense for you to change entities. Like, for instance, uh, if you want to go public, you're a C-Corp. We often set up a shell C-Corp for morphing into later. Okay, cool. That's yeah. good to know. I, I would not have, I thought you were going to say, well, you need to know, like, how many employees you plan to have, which I'm sure is information you'd want to know down the line. But ha your business plan, I was not expecting that answer. So I'm really glad that I asked. <laughs> cool, cool. So um, this is where... Knowing your numbers and having your business plan and budget pay off. 
big time. Yeah, absolutely. At least that was lots of great information as always. And I'm sure now you've just raised a dozen other questions in our listeners' heads, but that's okay. So, you know, it's a case of make sure you, um, what is it? You don't know what you don't know. So now you learned a little bit and now you've got more questions, but that's now the time to, uh, you know, schedule a time to meet with your tax professional, your CPA um, and determine what you need to do. So at least do you have a tip for the week for us? I do. And it's actually a quote. I got so excited when I found this. I was like, are you kidding me? But this is the tip from Grant Cardone. Don't go to work to work. Go to work to prosper. Love that. That is awesome. That is definitely what every entrepreneur should be having their outlook as being. Um, that that's why they started their business in the first place, after all. So that's right. So great information, Elise. Thank you so much. Don't forget, you can check out our ABC Business Show Facebook page. Uh, make sure you give us a like and keep up with the new releases of our podcasts. Don't forget to like and follow us on Apple and Spotify. And we would love it if you would leave us a review and share our podcast with friends that uh, you have that have their own businesses that you think this would be helpful for them to listen to as well. So next week, we will be hearing from MJ, and she will be talking about identifying lead measures. So we're going to get off the, uh, the tax wheel, and we're going to get onto the marketing wheel and help you to uh, uh, grow your business in that aspect. So great information. Thank you so much, ladies. We will see you next time. All right. Thank you. You have been listening to the ABC Business Show with Carrie, Elise, and MJ. Make sure you tune in next week.